Good day, grade 8 learners, and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. I am Anita Clayton, and I will guide you through this series of lessons on life and living. This will be your last lesson in the Life Science section for Term 1. In this lesson, we are going to dive in the invisible world around us. We are going to look at microorganisms. Imagine you are a giant looking down on a tiny little city. And all these little creatures in this little city plays an important role. This is just like microorganism. Organisms that are so tiny that we cannot see them with the naked eye. And we need to use a microscope to study or see them. So microorganisms cannot be seen with the naked eye. But macroscopic organisms can be seen with the naked eye. Let's see if I can test your memory. Who can remember the seven life processes you learned about in primary school? Press the pause button and see if you can remember. Let's see how well you remember them. Here they are. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. These seven processes are what define something as living. So, how do microorganisms fit into this? Microorganisms are divided into different groups based on their physical appearance and their behavior. The microorganisms we will study are viruses, bacteria, protozoans, fungi, and algae. Let's take a closer look at viruses. They are classified as non-living because they don't perform any of those seven life processes that we just spoke of. They don't eat, they don't grow, and they don't respond to stimuli. In fact, viruses can't even move on their own. No cellular respiration either. They don't make energy like living organisms do. And here's the most interesting part. They can't even reproduce by themselves. They need to hijack a living host cell to multiply. Imagine a virus as a tiny invader. First, it attaches to a specific host cell. Once it's attached, it injects its genetic material right into the cell. From there, the virus takes over the cell's machinery, forcing the cell to stop what it's doing and start making virus parts instead. Once enough viruses are built, they burst out of the host cell, destroying it in the process. These newly made viruses go on to infect other cells, repeating the cycle over and over again. Think of it as a zombie invasion. One infected cell produces hundreds of viruses and this is how the spread happens rapidly. Here is a summary of the basics of viruses. Next up, let's look at bacteria. Bacteria is one of the most common microorganisms on Earth. These little fellas are everywhere, even in your body. Bacteria are single-celled organisms and much simpler than the cells that make up plants and animals. In fact, bacteria are prokaryotic. This means they don't have a true nucleus or other membrane-bound organelles like plant and animal cells do. Instead, their DNA floats freely inside the cell. You will learn more about the structure of cells in grade 9. Despite their simplicity, bacteria comes in all shapes and sizes. Here are some basics of bacteria. Did you know not all bacteria are actually harmful? 
Some of them are actually good for our bodies, like probiotics. People take them because it helps in their gut to digest foods that they otherwise will not be able to. Bacteria plays an important part in the nitrogen cycle, which you will learn more about in grade 10. But here is a quick summary of what the nitrogen cycle is. Nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil take nitrogen from the air and turn it into a form plants can use. Plants can absorb this nitrogen and animals get it by eating the plants. When plants and animals die, decomposing bacteria return nitrogen to the soil. Finally, denitrifying bacteria converted back into nitrogen gas, returning it to the atmosphere and keeping the cycle going. Now let's talk about another fascinating group called protists. Most protists are a lot like small animals because many of them move around and eat other microorganisms for energy. Some even eat bacteria. These tiny organisms are seen as the wild cards of microorganisms because they are so unique that scientists place them in their own group because they are not plants, animals or fungi. Just like other living organisms, protists carry out all the seven living processes we spoke about earlier. While some protists are harmless or even beneficial, other protists can cause serious diseases, such as the plasmodium. Plasmodium is spread by mosquitoes. When an infected mosquito bites someone, the plasmodium enters their bloodstream where it infects their red blood cells. Once inside, it multiplies, making the person very sick. Malaria is a very dangerous disease. The important thing, however, is that it can be treated and it can be prevented. Let's turn our attention to the algae. The algae is classified as protista and are mostly found in large masses of water like lakes, rivers, oceans and so on. They can be really small like single-celled algae or large like seaweed. In many ways, algae are like plants. They produce their own food by the process of photosynthesis using the sun. And for this reason, they are a very important part of our ecosystem because during photosynthesis, they produce oxygen and also provide food for other marine animals. But sometimes it also causes algal blooms. This is when there's a sudden increase of algae in the water. Algal blooms are usually caused by pollution, especially when fertilizers from farms or waste run into the water. These fertilizers contain nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, which algae love. When an algal bloom happens, it can block sunlight from reaching underwater plants and use up the oxygen in the water, which can then harm fish and other marine life. Here is a quick summary of the basic information you need to remember about algae. Now for the last group of microorganisms, fungi. You might think of fungi just as the mold that grows on the bread, but actually fungi is a lot more than that. Fungi are unique because they are neither plant nor animal. They belong to their own kingdom. Fungi can be made up of single cells like yeast, or they can be multicellular like mushrooms. Even mold, which grows on food, is a type of fungus. 
One thing that makes fungi different from other organisms is the way they get their food. Fungi are decomposers. This means they break down dead plants and animals to absorb nutrients. Fungi release chemicals onto their food which breaks it down and then they absorb the nutrients directly into their cells. Just like bacteria, not all fungi are bad. Some of them are actually useful. For example, yeast. Yeast is used to bake bread and it is also used in the brewing of beer. Penicillin, a life-saving antibiotic, was actually discovered from a type of mold. Once again, here is a quick summary of the basics of fungi. Now, let's take a closer look at some common diseases caused by these microorganisms. First up, viral infection, like the flu or influenza virus. Remember, cover your nose, cough into your elbow to stop the spread of the infection. Next up, the HIV virus, another viral infection. Bacteria, common examples are strep throat, sore throat, as well as tuberculosis. Let's not forget about fungal infections. Example, athlete's foot, that itchy dead skin between your toes. Ooh. Finally, we have diseases caused by protists. Most common one, malaria, spread by that difficult little mosquito. Please remember that these few that I mentioned are just the most common, but there are lots of other infections and diseases caused by microorganisms. Microorganisms are everywhere, on surfaces, doorknobs, and even our phones. So, washing your hands regularly with soap and water can help get rid of bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Make sure you wash for at least 20 seconds, scrubbing all parts of your hands, including your nails. Another technique to stop the spread of viruses is sterilization. Sterilization is the process of removing or killing all forms of microorganisms. This is especially important in medical settings, kitchens, and other food industries. A major breakthrough in sterilization came through the work of Louis Pasteur. Pasteur is most famous for pasteurization, a method he developed to kill harmful microorganisms in liquids like milk, wine and beer. Now grade 8, that's a wrap. Thank you for joining me through all these lessons for life and living through term 1. Remember, complete all of the self-marking assessments at the end of every lesson and Please join us again with our next round of videos. See you guys. Ciao.